One of the most difficult to believe aspects of the Earth disaster cycle, which will reset in the next 25 years, is the Earth flipping over. But alas, you cannot explain the evidence without it, and the physics says it's possible. We have shared many times the new orientation of Earth after the flip. This is how our planet will look and rotate in the aftermath of the catastrophe. Old polar regions at the equator, new poles near India and South America, and continent-sized tsunamis as it moves there. We have described in detail that our preferred theory for this is a crustal unlocking from the mantle in the solar micronova event. Induction breaks the thermoelectric bond between them, and the crust slides free. But we have also gone over and do fully recognize the possibility of another alternative, the Genebekov effect, the tennis racket theorem, or second axis theorem. In fact, despite our preference for unlocking the crust to be this mechanism, we made two videos on the Genebekov effect in 2019, five years ago. Given the theory's recent resurgence into the internet, we figured it's time for a quick review for all of you here. So here is where this begins, the spinning object in space. This can be done with any object spun around an axis that is not symmetrical, like a tennis racket or a hammer. There are periods of stability and rotation punctuated by a rapid flip, and then a recapture of stability for a while before another flip. Now this concept was the focus of a video by Veritasium, very cool channel, but he got this one wrong because his entire premise was that this couldn't possibly apply to the earth because we don't have the same dynamics and structure. He said that earth is symmetrical about our spinning axis and well, that is just not true. If earth looked like this, I mean actually looked like this inside, then okay, Maybe, but this oversimplified view of the Earth is utterly false. And while for many purposes, it is okay to just think of the Earth as a stable, spinning, symmetrical sphere, this case is not one of them. Not only do we have an imperfect surface, but the same goes as you head downward through the crust and below. The sphere is actually a slightly oblate spheroid bulged at the equator. Our shape is further complicated by an ever-changing nature. Things like what you're seeing here tug and stretch and crunch the planet, making our asymmetric reality around the rotational axis a dynamic animal. Even our orbit around the sun, which takes us from 7 degrees south of the solar equator in March to 7 degrees north in September, and our axis tilt relative to the sun changing throughout the year as we orbit, further complicate this issue and take us further from the symmetry that is needed to nullify this hypothesis. But more importantly, two ultraconductive structures, the LLSVPs, protrude from the core like handlebars or the cross section of that T handle we saw spinning in space at the start of the video. These are just the grandest of the non homogeneous underground, and the others are vastly more numerous. Folks, in order to scientifically say the Genebekov effect cannot apply to Earth, Everything I just described from the equatorial bulge to eccentricity to the underground structures would have to be forgotten and ignored. We just can't do that if we want to properly answer the question. One of the best examples of this reality is the gravitational maps of the globe. These tell us that much is going on inside that is not reflected in the near spherical outside. And all of it tells us that rotational instabilities can occur. The recent discovery of the bulged and lopsided core of the Earth, just another example. In fact, there is not one single geodynamic or geophysical trait of our planet that nullifies the flip possibility. In fact, they all make it plausible. I'd like to now give a shout out to the ethical skeptic. He and I are not doing the same discussion or theory in our work, but yeah, there's certainly overlap. His recent examination of the Genebekov effect is pretty impressive and even includes evidence I missed, evidence I never thought to look for, starting to be convinced that what we see at the Great Pyramids is erosion from the very floods we describe being from the last flip of the Earth. What's more, his 104 degree shift is not that far off from our hypothesized 90 degree flip and if he's right about 104 degrees, that actually still makes the evidence I've shown many times fit. 
anywhere from about 75 to 105 degrees can work actually. I just went with what Major Maynard White gave us from the classified Pentagon documents from 75 years ago, the 90 degrees. Alas, what we can say today is that I do still prefer the crustal unlocking mechanism, but I cannot deny that this is another, a second, workable solution to the evidence that the planet flips over. It's happened before and it's about to happen again. To see all of the evidence, get the timelines, and learn more about everything involved in this unfolding catastrophe, see the videos linked below, right below the video in the description box, starting with the catastrophe evidence. It's time to get caught up before you find yourself looking at stars in the night sky you're not used to seeing. And I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.